When it comes to being an artist, there are two common mistakes people make when thinking about their art style. On one hand, there are artists who feel frustrated because they haven't found a distinct style. They spend all their time trying to develop one, only to just feel lost, unmotivated and constantly questioning their work. The frustration of not being able to create a consistent collection of art that fits into one easily defined style can become overwhelming. On the other hand, there are artists who believe they've already found their style and they cling to it tightly. While having a recognizable style can be comforting, it often leads to staying within the comfort zone, rarely experimenting or pushing boundaries. This can limit their potential development. Both scenarios, chasing an art style and being trapped by one, can prevent you from fully exploring your potential as an artist. The idea of having a signature art style is romanticized. It's often seen as the hallmark of a true artist, like you finally made it once you've defined your style. But focusing too much on this can actually do more harm than good. Focusing too much on developing that distinct style can lead to neglecting foundational skills like anatomy, composition, and color theory. Instead of building a solid base, you become more concerned with something that looks like it belongs in your collection. But these core skills are what allow you to adapt and grow. Without them, your art style will eventually hit a ceiling. Something I've noticed in my own journey is that I often neglect my studies. When I draw, I do it for the enjoyment of the process. I stick to what I know. I'm more likely to avoid frustration and I want drawing to be something that feels rewarding. But when it comes to actually studying art, whether it's anatomy or a new technique, reality hits. The flaws in my skills or thinking processes become apparent and that frustration can feel overwhelming, so that's why I avoid it. But here's the key. Frustration is actually a good sign and that's something I need to accept for myself too. It's a signal that there is room for improvement. Avoiding that discomfort might feel safe, but in doing so you're holding yourself back from real growth. If you give in to this frustration and avoid challenging yourself, your growth becomes stagnant. There's a concept called disequilibrium, a state where your current skills or knowledge are disrupted by new challenges. Without disruption, no real change or improvement can happen. It's essential to push beyond the limits of what you already know, allowing yourself to be uncomfortable. This disruption is the key to growth. Crossing the barrier is difficult. I too struggle with this. But the rewards, new skills, insights and creative breakthroughs are worth it. Sticking to what you know and repeating the same style over and over can make your art feel boring. Eventually, if you're not incorporating new insight or exploring fresh ideas, your work can become uninspired. You have to keep looking for ways to incorporate new elements into your art, whether it's experimenting with new techniques or subjects or tools. This exploration is what keeps your art evolving. Stay open to change and prevent your work from becoming still and allow your style to naturally expand over time. So let me give you a new perspective on art styles. Developing an art style is a lot like learning how to cook. When you're new to cooking, you don't know which flavors match or how to create the dishes that you imagine in your head. It's the same for starting as an artist. You don't know what artistic elements like colors, line, and form best represent your style. In cooking, it takes time to learn how ingredients work together. And in art, it's the same process. You won't know what flavors or style elements fit into your vision until you've tried a bunch of different combinations. And just like cooking, 
where practice and experimentation helps you discover what works, your art style will come from continuous exploration. Rather than focusing on defining your style from the start, focus on learning the ingredients, the technique and skills that allow you to create freely. Besides, art styles develop organically through experimentation, not by setting rigid rules or definitions. When you keep drawing, small bits of information stick with you, certain colors or shapes. You'll start to notice what excites you and especially what feels natural to you. An important point to remember is that you can't sit down and decide what your art style will be because it doesn't exist yet. It's a collection of habits, preferences and insights that grow over time. The only way to uncover it is through constant experimentation. And now I want you to think of your art style like a tree. It starts as a small plant with only a few branches, but over time as you nurture it, more branches grow and spread out in different directions. Each new skill, idea or technique you learn becomes another branch, expanding the reach of your creative expression. Just like a tree, your art style isn't something that stays small and fixed. It keeps growing, adding new layers and dimensions as you grow as an artist. The more you nurture it with experimentation and learning, the stronger and more diverse it becomes. Because this growth is organic, you don't need to limit yourself to one box or one style. Your art doesn't need to stay the same over time. In fact, it should change as you continue learning. There is no rule that says you can only work in one specific style. You can explore multiple styles or even combine different elements into your work. The beauty of art is that it's flexible. Whatever you create is inherently your style. By allowing your style to shift and grow, you stay true to your personal journey. That said, having a recognizable style does have its benefits especially for commercial work or building a personal brand. A distinct style can help build recognition. It allows people to identify your work at a glance, which can be helpful for building a following or attracting clients. However, you don't need to rush into this. Let your audience grow with you as your style evolves naturally, instead of forcing yourself into a single aesthetic early on. Allow your style to mature. Authentic growth will resonate more with your audience than a forged, rigid identity. But then there is a great benefit to having a personal style. And that is the ability to build your own artistic world. If your character designs and your environments, your storytelling elements are consistent, they can create a sense of cohesion in your work. But you don't need to have a fully defined art style to start building this world. Focus on developing recurring themes like color schemes or moods in your work. Even if the visual details vary, having these elements present will give your art a cohesive feel. Think of your art style as an overarching atmosphere that ties everything together rather than a fixed set of rules. In the end, don't stress about finding your art style. Embrace the journey, focus on experimentation and let your style develop naturally. Your true voice as an artist will always be there. Whether or not it fits into a neat little box. Your style isn't something you find. It's something that finds you. And as long as you keep growing, learning and pushing your boundaries, your style will evolve into something that is truly yours. <laughs>